Hi, my name is Glenn Smith uh, and I'm CEO of DriveWorks. We're a gold sponsor here at 3D Experience World 2021 and we also have three gold partner uh, products. And I'm here today to talk to you about how you could configure and automate your custom products with DriveWorks, our software. So what do I mean by custom products? What I really mean is uh, product variations or, or maybe um, if you're in a, an engineer to order, an ETO environment, and that might be engineer to order, design to order, configure to order. They're all um, really meaning that if your design changes every time you sell or manufacture one. So if we take this uh, cupboard as an example, changing the length, the width, the height, the doors, the legs that are on there, the material, if you can imagine how much design change is required each time one of those or many of those things change. And if we look at similar industries, so a cupboard like this one here, um, the number of slots and cutouts on the front is gonna change dramatically based on the overall sizes. Maybe the bills and materials will change based on the number of shelves. And it's those changes that can take a lot of time for companies that manufacture this type of thing. And it's not just about the furniture industry, other industries as well, so architectural components. If you imagine this door here, um, a certain amount of it is uh, uh, aluminium uh, and sheet metal. So, and you can also imagine that when they build this building, the tolerances that builders work to means that they can't really manufacture this until they've built the building. And so then they have to go and measure it because of the amount of uh, work involved, because of the metal work, there's a lot of data to create just for this one door. And if you think about um, something like this door, just by changing the structural opening width, there's a lot of components then that depend on that width. And so that's where rules come into it. So with um, a product like this, you might have some rules that basically say the door size is the structural opening width, less a, a gap around a frame, plus the frame, plus a bit of a gap around the door, and that gets you the door width. But this door might have an inner skin and an outer skin. And so then the inner skin is then more driven by rules um, to get the size of that compared to the overall size. And you can imagine now when one of those dimensions changes, when that structural opening width changes, uh, the ripple effect that has on all of the components that are used within the door. And if you think about other industries as well, you might think that um, robots are just mass produced and that could be the case, but actually because they're moving a lot of different components about, think about all of the change parts, all of the tooling, uh, most of that depends on the thing that's being moved, the thing that the robot is interacting with. And so if you have a custom product actually being manufactured using a robot, chances are you also need to be able to automate the design of all of the change parts and tooling. So there's plenty of other industries as well. So things like uh, process uh, flow, process work. If you imagine you design uh, these or imagine you sell these and the customer says, actually, I want to be able to put another few hundred uh, cubic gallons uh, of fluid in. Imagine the design change on something like this, even down to now the number of steps uh, to get up there. So that's quite a design change. And all of these products here, so conveyors, lifting equipment, they're all generally designed inside SolidWorks and they all have that high amount of uh, design work required to create the production information each time they're sold. And actually you can't not do the custom uh, product thing because if you don't, your competitors will. In our personal lives, we're used to having personalized products. It's no different in industry. The whole thing about having custom products is, is here. So what we need to figure out is quick and easy ways of creating them, of creating that design, of creating the quotes, the bills and materials, because it's actually not just about the design. If you think about all of the data required to sell and manufacture something like this, or these um, HVAC equipment here, or this staircase, or even this play equipment, the amount of data required to sell each and every one of them is quite a lot. And so from our point of view, what we suggest is you automate it and you build rules into your design 
so that you can create design variations, create custom products like this and like this and like this really quickly. And of course, one of the other benefits of automating your custom products is that it's going to free you up so that you can innovate and you can innovate within your industry and create the next generation of your company's products rather than just creating the same design but different time and time again. So now let's, let's look at what's involved in the sales process. So it starts with a the customer, they have a requirement for their custom product. They'll usually contact somebody in sales and say, hey, I've got a requirement for a custom product. The salesperson will say, yep, yeah, we can do that, but I need to understand a little bit more uh, about what you need. There'll usually be a to in and fro in of information. The sales guy will usually need to get engineering involved because they'll probably need to create a general arrangement drawing. They'll probably need to work out roughly what the component costs are so that they can do a quotation. And so that process will go round and round a few times until the customer's happy with what they're getting. The sales guy's happy that there's enough margin left in the deal. The engineer's happy that what has been specified can be manufactured. And only at that point can an order get placed. Now, the interesting thing, especially in an engineer to order company where they're offering custom products is they might not get every order converted from a quotation. They might only be getting one in 10 of those uh, quotes converted. So now we imagine the cost of all of that uh, round and about work has, has to be set aside one in 10 orders. And that's a lot of work just to get to this point. Now from this point, assuming this product's been ordered, now needs to go back to engineering to create all of the component designs, all of the manufacturing data. And that manufacturing data isn't just the parts, assemblies, and drawings coming out of SOLIDWORKS. It's also things like the cutting lists, the bills of materials that need to go into a, an MRP or an ERP system. It's all the takeoff lists, the purchased items, all of that documentation needs creating really before we can actually start manufacturing it. Once we're manufacturing it, now assuming that all of that work, all of those documents are now accurate, assuming they're 100% right, which you know as we know they may not be, then we can manufacture that and dispatch it. And that's actually quite a long process. And obviously people who are selling a product, a standard item off the shelf, don't have to go through most of that. But for custom products, this is generally the process. So let's have a look at that now on, on a timeline. Uh, so this is going through all of that iteration between customer, sales, engineering, customer, sales, engineering. And this is looking more at the elapsed time of that and the amount of work required uh, at each of those stages. And at the point where the order's created and it comes out of sales and we can actually have an order, obviously from a time-wise uh, point of view, that then needs to go back to engineering, um, through to manufacturing and out towards dispatch, assuming that uh, the product is, is correct and all the data is correct. So now let's look at if we can introduce some um, digital innovation, some digital selling into this. And let's look at if we had a 3D product configurator where the customer and sales could engage with each other at the same time, where the engineering knowledge is in that guided selling system, we can now look at what the timeline will now be around the customer having less interaction with sales because it's more meaningful over a shorter amount of time because they're creating a lot of data automatically and it can go straight from engineering through manufacturing with hopefully less errors through to dispatch. And you can see that reduced timeline on there. But the next thing we need to look at is what that actually means. What does that solution look like? So in a digital world, um, your sales guys, your distributors need to be able to collaborate directly as we've discussed with the customer. So you're definitely going to want some uh, web-based technology. You're going to want to be able to specify those products, to review those designs, to see them in 3D, to interact with them in a 3D uh, world um, on multiple devices. And if we have a look at some examples of that, so this is an example of a uh, trailer body. 
being configured in a browser. We're changing some options in terms of the height and the length. And we discussed before the knock on that can have on the number of components that need redesigning. So there's some other choices here to do with the door, completely different assembly on there. Um, but again, it will still be dependent on the height that we selected. Even things like the paint color is gonna affect things, but also having that 3D item that we can interact with, we can have a look around it, we can poke it, we can prod it, is a really good thing to be able to do. And I've got some other examples here. This is of a bifold door. So we can, again, interact with it. We can see it in 3D. We can see what it might look like in our building. We can change those structural opening widths and we discussed before the amount of downstream work required for that change that's happening. We can see summaries of information on there. We can change some other options. It's now going to really start changing what we've got in terms of the number of horizontal bars in there or the vertical bars. It's a 3D model. We know that a picture paints a thousand words. 3D does so much more. We can go and have a look at it from different aspects. We can be truly happy with it. We can open that door right up and we can be really comfortable, again, with the price down here, that that is what we want. It's at the price that we want. We know it can be manufactured. And I've got another example here. So imagine that you are laying out conveyors in a factory. You might have some existing items in that factory already but we might want to be able to lay things out a little bit around existing items that are in there. You can only really do that in 3D. So let's get rid of the roof. Let's start adding some more products in here. So I'm going to add a custom product. We're going to put a, a gantry crane in there. We're going to select that. We've seen the price. We can position it. We can select where it goes. We can rotate it. And now we're ready for our conveyor. So we're going to select conveyor, we've already selected custom, we're going to do a whole conveyor line in one go. So we'll pick the roller conveyor and we'll do it as based on a layout by clicking in this 3D space in a browser with our customer, with our distributors. And as you can see now we're starting to pick some points. So we'll bring the conveyor across here a bit, we'll bring it down here, we'll adjust it over to there, we'll finish it where we need it to finish. We'll decide we've got it in kind of the wrong place, so we'll go back and adjust it because of the adjustment there we've made. You can see that's gone red because it's at not quite the right angle for what we want, but we can adjust that and then we can say, okay, that's the route I want it to take. Let's use that to design my conveyor and here is this conveyor. Now we can still adjust things. We can still adjust things like the style, so we're gonna go for food grade. We can change the conveyor width. We can change the height. Just changing things like the food grade is going to redesign this component because it's a rules-based system. It knows how to do that. We click go and it's now going to put that conveyor in our factory. We can now rotate that around. Let's close the roof again and we have our design done. So the last example I want to show is an example of HVAC. So imagine you design uh, this type of thing here. Um, let's just take, go through a uh, simple configuration. So things like changing the airflow that goes through it, changing the connection options is going to have quite a big impact on the whole design. What we're going to do now is pick the actual uh, items required in that HVAC system. So this is picking things like the fans, the heat recovery, uh, the entry and exit, the filters. Each one of these has its own options but obviously the constraints of those options are based on that initial airflow that we chose right at the start. So we're gonna pick a few more things here. We're gonna change our, our depth. We've seen prices as we go along. We're seeing a summary here of all the items that we've added. We'll now go for the big one, the heat recovery module. So this is one of those two story things with a ladder. We can change the ladder, change it back again. Um, again, seeing the price as we go through. Uh, let's put uh, some exit um, items on there now. This exit module, we'll go for a mesh one. Again, we can see the price of it. And because we've got as far as the exit, that's it, we're done. Now at this point, obviously we're seeing all of the items in it, but we can also see that full bill of materials. Now this is a completely brand new configured bill of materials and a quote here. 
all unique for uh, this order, unique for this HVAC system, but actually now the system has all of the information it needs to create all of the sales manufacturing uh, data to be able to make one of these. All we need to do now is confirm order and let it get on with it in the background. So let's actually have a look at what happens now in the background. So we have SolidWorks. DriveWorks has now got all of those requirements. It's calculated everything that needs generating and now it's gonna do it. Now, we've actually speeded this bit up. So full disclosure, this is speeded up. All of the designs, manufacturing data and everything else required for this product we've just uh, created takes about 40 minutes to generate inside SOLIDWORKS. So I've speeded this up at about 10 times, but I want to give you an idea of the sort of thing it does. So what it's doing now is taking master models, that's how DriveWorks works, and it's applying rules, it's applying all of that change and variation to create brand new components. It's driving parts, assemblies, drawings on parts, it's driving dimensions, features, not just features, but all the advanced feature parameters that you can drive in SOLIDWORKS. They're all controllable by DriveWorks. It's, uh, for assemblies, we can swap out components. So you don't have to overload a master assembly, but we can also generate instance specific information. We can also drive information in each configuration in the model. And then when it comes to the drawings, you'll see that we draw it, drive in multiple sheets, multiple views. We can rescale, we can resize, we can drive annotations, we can drive an, uh, annotation and dimension positions, we can drive all of the information on the drawing border, including the bills and materials, we can drive all of the part numbers, we can then save all of these models in, onto disk in uh, a location of your choice based on rules, but we can also save all of these files directly into uh, PDM so that everybody has and can access all of that information. Now this is speeded up at about 10 times, but you can see just the amount of work that DriveWorks is doing in the background to create all of the parts, assemblies and drawings. And it's not just the parts, assemblies and drawings, it's any file format that you can also get out of SOLIDWORKS, DriveWorks will automate the creation of that too. So that's DXFs, PDFs, uh, 3D uh, manufacturing information that you need. Um, it'll integrate with SOLIDWORKS, CAM. It'll integrate with things like uh, PhotoView 360. It'll integrate, as I said before, with PDM to make sure that all of the components, because it's doing this based on rules, are gonna be right first time. So it's getting towards the end now. It's doing a lot of sheet metal parts. I'll show you at the end just how much information it's created during this. I actually find this process quite fascinating watching it work because essentially the computer's doing all of the work so that we don't have to. We can go away and do other things, as I said at the start, which is innovating, which is a good thing to be able to do. So it's getting to the point now where it's uh, almost finished creating these. It's got a few more to do. And once it's finished doing all of the components, you'll notice some of these are assemblies. It'll then get to doing the overall assembly. Now there are millions of permutations of what can go in that final assembly. So what it's actually gonna do is build the assembly generatively. DriveWorks has this thing called generation tasks and you can apply generation tasks throughout this process of driving models to do those one-off unique things. It might be something like inserting a library feature uh, in a part that's done in a generative way so that you don't have to overload the part. It might be a generation task that exports images or uh, maybe even creates the CAM data through SOLIDWORKS CAM. And those generation tasks, quite unique to DriveWorks, are the way of finishing off the design. So it might even be things like, and we'll see it when it gets to the final drawing, inserting all the balloons in a drawing to do with the build materials. So this is the assembly now that it's creating and it's building it up based on all of these components. They're all unique. They're all just created for this one design. And it's finished that in about 40 minutes, untouched by human hands to get there. It then does the drawing. It'll put the balloons on, as I mentioned earlier. And at that point, we have our custom design, it's accurate, it's correct, and it was based on the information that we filled out in that form. 
And obviously when I say we drive these, what I mean is based on the information in that form, based on the rules, DriveWorks, the software is gonna create that design. And I said we'd have a look at the amount of uh, files it's created. So here's just a, an image of the folders that it's created. In each of these, we have things like all the entry modules, uh, all of the different uh, sheet metal parts for the fan, fan housing. This is one of the filters. This is some of the heat exchangers. These are all the drawings it created, not just the drawings, but the PDFs. And in some cases here, the DXFs for all of the sheet metal components. And it created all of that automatically while we watched. We also got, as we saw while we were configuring, we get things like the quotations, things like the uh, bill of material. The quotation, by the way, isn't just, um, uh, just words. It includes a breakdown of all the items. This is the bill of material. These are all of the items on it. This is brand new information. And DriveWorks can also pass all of this information to any downstream system that needs it. So if you need to get this bill of material into your MRP or ERP system, if you need to get the quotation into your CRM system, then DriveWorks can do that automatically and without having to re-enter or re-key any information. So what I'd like to do now is take you through some of the technologies that you need to be able to make that happen. So obviously we've looked at taking uh, some information filled out in a form, linking that through to CAD data. And the, the link between that in DriveWorks is rules. We said at the start, DriveWorks is a rules-based system. So I've got an example here of a rule. And a rule can be things like math. So here we are gonna change this height, we're gonna change the width. And if you see these numbers update, we're gonna calculate a new uh, brace length and angle based on those values. And if you have a look at this formula, you'll notice it's very similar. In fact, it's identical to Microsoft Excel. We've built DriveWorks so that engineers can build rules to automate engineered products inside SolidWorks. So this is an example of uh, using maths, but there's other places where rules can be used. So for instance, here we're gonna cr create a quotation and based on some information, we want to update the contract number. So we're gonna change the order number up there. We're gonna change it from an order to an inquiry. We're gonna put a new company name in and you'll see down the bottom in all of the documents that then get created, things like the contract number will update automatically. We're not having to re-enter that information. We can calculate that value once using the rule that we're showing here. Again, that's exactly as it would look in Microsoft Excel. Slightly different in DriveWorks from Microsoft Excel. Excel would be something like B4 minus D12 uh, divided by B8. Um, in DriveWorks, things tend to get named, but apart from the naming, the same functions that work in Excel work in DriveWorks. Actually, we've created a lot more on top of what Excel would normally do, and we don't use Excel. Uh, we have our own rules engine, but it's the syntax of it is the same as Excel. And that's really just so that you don't have a barrier to entry, but also because everybody knows how to use Excel. Another example using rules, and this is to do with data. People, companies have data everywhere. It might be in spreadsheets, it might be in a database, it might be in comma delimited text files. DriveWorks can work with that data by either referencing it where it is or dragging it in as a copy. And here we've just got an example of we're just doing a VLOOKUP, again, a standard Excel thing. We look up a different name. It's putting as a new value, a new uh, address right there on the quotation. It can pass that information then through to our drawing borders, to our ERP system. And so just by changing one thing on a form, the company name, where that data came out of some other system, we can then pull more data and use that downstream. One more, logic. Everybody uses logic. If this happens, then make this happen. So in this particular case, if this cage uh, goes above a certain length, then we need a new support, an extra support in, uh, in our cage. And this is just showing the actual rule is um, if the cylinder length is greater than uh, 1200, then I need that extra brace. Uh, and so quite straightforward and quite an easy rule to build in DriveWorks. DriveWorks has a lot of wizards for creating those, so, so it will make it a lot easier. You don't have to just type them each time, but they are at least very, very easy to understand uh, once you have them. 
and it can go a lot further as well. So imagine now constraints. So here in this example, we're going to calculate the volume of this cylinder. Actually, in this example, we're not. We're going to calculate the length or the diameter based on the volume. And for this, it's using uh, constraints and convergence. So as we change the volume here, um, knowing that the length is going to stay the same, you can see the diameter change and it's doing that reverse calculation. And if I switch it so that the um, uh, diameter stays the same when I change the volume, the length changes. So what I'm actually showing you here is the work required or the tools inside DriveWorks to set DriveWorks up. This is something that would typically be done once and then obviously you would use the forms in DriveWorks and the rules and everything that you've put in to create, to repeatedly create new variations. So the next part of the technology then, and we've already shown you some of this, is the form technology, but what we've not um, shown you is how that's done. So DriveWorks has form technology that allows you to create dynamic custom forms for any device. To do that, DriveWorks has a, a form designer, so this is uh, inside DriveWorks administrator, so this is the setup of DriveWorks, and this is just showing a form in DriveWorks. Now, you should recognize this from when I created that HVAC system earlier, but this isn't the whole form. DriveWorks is very modular. You can put a form inside a form. Actually, it's project-based, and you can have a project inside another project to make DriveWorks as modular as you need to be for the products that you're doing. When I showed you the trailer earlier, and we swapped one door for another door, we're not having to have both doors in there. We can have one in and swap it, and that's because of the modular nature of DriveWorks. So as a form designer, um, this is, you can select items at the top, drag them onto your form, build rules for where they are, build rules for what they look like. There's a whole property grid going on so that we can, based on rules, set up this form. And the really good thing about this is you create the form once, you build the rules on it, you put your images on it, and then you click a button and you can have that directly on the web. You're not having to recreate it to show this in a browser on any device. So we talked earlier about the process, that sales process through getting an order, and DriveWorks has a workflow built into it, but it's a highly customizable workflow. And this is because DriveWorks is gonna create a lot of data along the way. You might not want to create all of that data all at the right time. You might also want to involve other people in that workflow so things only get created maybe when somebody's approved something or somebody's got to a certain something's got to a certain stage um, and this is an example of a typical workflow in driveworks but as i said before it's highly customizable and you can actually uh, set up tasks to run on entering and exiting any of these states and just to give you an idea of what some others might look like this is a bit more of a complicated uh, workflow with an approval and a rejection cycle, uh, the ability to save before filling something out because you might not know everything to start off with. And once things are approved, they can go through uh, to be manufactured. Uh, this is even more complicated one uh, still where it's going through generating different documents at different stages of the workflow. And again, it's highly configurable, but workflow is really important. The other thing that is uh, really important, and we talked about this quite a lot in terms of digital transformation, and that's being able to pull and push data from other places, whatever that might be, whether it's a PDM PLM system, whether we're gonna drive CAM directly, whether that's gonna be other company systems like CRM, MRP or ERP. It's important that the data that DriveWorks creates can be consumed, not just consumed, but passed automatically and directly to these other systems. But actually it's not all about passing the data to these systems. You might also want to pull data from these systems. And because there are so many different systems out there, DriveWorks needs uh, integration technologies and methodologies to be able to pull and push data from these systems. And so whether we're passing data to and from files, to and from databases, using web services, using APIs, using web APIs, DriveWorks can integrate with these things uh, quite easily. Now, obviously all of these technologies are different. You might need some domain knowledge of them to be able to get that data in and out, but DriveWorks has the technologies to allow that to happen. 
So one of the other things we've seen uh, throughout this presentation is the ability for DriveWorks to configure things in 3D uh, in, in a browser. And we have our own 3D file format to allow that to happen. It starts by doing an export from uh, SolidWorks or, or actually it can take in uh, a whole variety of 3D uh, CAD formats. And once they're brought into DriveWorks, they can be manipulated so that they can act based on the rules. So doing things like, again, replacing components, stretching things, moving things, changing appearance based on rules, um, all happens using our 3D technology. So to give an example of this, we have this cupboard. This cupboard's in 3D, there's a lot of lighting going on. You can see a lot of reflections. It's quite a good looking model. But we can also then change the height, we can change the width, we can change the depth, and we can see that happening in real time. And we can see the price changing, we can see a lot of other things changing as we're doing that. We can open the doors, we can interact with the 3D model, and that's all because of our advanced 3D technology. And obviously one of our main technologies is our ability to automate SOLIDWORKS. SOLIDWORKS is a great product for, for automation and we've really taken it a long way inside DriveWorks. And it isn't just in DriveWorks about um, driving uh, dimensions and features and some of those base level things, but through things like generation tasks uh, and that generative modeling of uh, inserting um, library features or uh, creating assemblies on the fly, of automatically ballooning or dimensioning drawings, we really are taking a lot of that work out of creating that custom design uh, in CAD. So as you can see, DriveWorks has got you covered when it comes to those custom products, when it comes to engineering to order. Um, but actually we might want to talk now about some steps that you can take to have a go yourselves. So uh, DriveWorks Express, we said at the start that we had three uh, gold certified products. The first one is DriveWorks Express and this is one if you have SOLIDWORKS you have this already. Um, thoroughly recommend you have a go with it. Um, it will show if DriveWorks is the right technology for you. It will show if you can understand our uh, rules and the way that we uh, build those uh, base level uh, design automation things. Um, the next level up is DriveWorks Solo. Again it's a gold certified product but you can download this for uh, 30 days directly from our website, have a go with it, prove out some things. It's still gonna run inside SOLIDWORKS, but it's more advanced design automation. And then our main product is DriveWorks Pro. This is the one I've been showing the most of, and this allows you to go all the way through to the web, to create everything you need to be able to sell and manufacture custom products, to integrate with things like ERP and CAM, and to integrate with things like uh, PDM and there's a lot of different uh, options for that, but we recommend that you start small and work up. If you want to take that step, we have two choices now. Go to our website, driveworks.co.uk, and go to products and have a look. And this will uh, allow you to explore all three. And the other option is, we are at 3D Experience World 2021. We are on our booth. Please come and talk to us. We'd love to engage with you about your needs from a uh, configured product, engineer to order point of view. So we look forward to speaking to you there. And for now, thank you very much for listening.